Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to part two of my make prim reviews. Today's video is going to cover everything else, which actually isn't too many products, but everything else from make prim that I've been trying both for this past month as well as longer. It's been so funny to finally trial this brand as I've been using Make Prim products for a long time, but we've never had any kind of long-term dedicated review video. Well, we finally do. We have two, in case you missed it. We did a video on the sunscreens. We, do I think I'm the royal we? Apparently, sometimes. As always, timestamps and links are in the description box below. Again, Stylevana was kind enough to send me over some products, and in this video, I did purchase some of these products with my own money as well. It's not going to influence how I feel about anything, and you will see why, because I know some of you are thinking, this video seems pretty tame, her thumbnail made me feel like it was going to be a different video. Oh no, no, we are getting there. Hopefully this video can both be a make prim review and also a bit of a warning. And by the way, I feel like I haven't said this in a while, so my reviews are almost always filmed barefaced, so you can see how things went. In today's video, I'm going to take all of this off. We're just going to run through a routine. I don't have a makeup remover from make prim, so I'm just going to go ahead and take off this makeup today. By the way, I got ready today while listening to Joy Division. You all understand? Yeah, you, you understand? So I'm going to go take this off and I'll be right back and we'll get into this Make Prim skincare routine plus what the heck happened. And we are back. It is time to get into one of the two cleansers. Now, I already showed you all the Low Irritant and Mild Acid Foam pH 5.5 Safe Me Relief Moisture Cleansing Foam. Long name. In case you missed it, you can see me try this on in that video. I'm not going to use this today, and I also, I realized I really want to clarify something. So all of these cleansing foams, these are all made with oily combination skin types in mind. They're never going to be a favorite for me. I'm sure I put my skin type up on the screen already. It is dry, acne prone, a little bit sensitive. So it's not the perfect match for me. That said, I did realize I can still pull off cleansing with these from time to time if I use a tiny amount. M my deal with Korean cleansers is that I felt like they were so, so stripping in the past before I figured that out. Now I just realize it's kind of a different way of of using Korean cleansers than it is Western cleansers. But anyway, I'm gonna use a cleanser that I have definitely talked about as a cleanser that I've loved, the Rice Biome Bubble Cleansing Gel. We're just gonna not read the long names on all of these. I do like this one. I'm gonna tell you, I suspect this one is being discontinued. And this is such a good example of why I actually really like this type of video today. This is a video, again, where I've tried these products a long time ago. We're revisiting them, essentially. It's a great format because I can tell when something goes off with the product before it's supposed to. This has a 12-month stamp on it, and yet... I had to replace the pump on this. I, I wonder if it might have to do with this containing some AHA, not AHA, this has LHA ingredients, the capital oil salicylic acid. Is it something to do with that? I don't know, but I think a lot of people would be pretty disappointed if they had to replace the pump on a cleanser. I'm also lucky I could. I could only do it because I had the uh, Beauty of Joseon Remember the old pump that they had for their, uh, what was it, the AHA toner? I love this type of product, but it makes me wonder if that's why we don't see more like this. It's so fun to use. And this also has a peeling effect. So what happens is the carbomer in this product balls up upon itself. Let me, let me massage this in a little more. There we go. You can see it on the back of my hand. Maybe? Can you? Nope. Maybe you can't. What's funny is that even though this is an exfoliating cleanser in two separate ways, I still find the way this feels on my skin to be more gentle than the foaming cleanser. How funny is that? It's so hard to predict how a product will be for you from its description. That's why I like YouTube, though. I think it is great that we live in this era where people of different skin types can share their experiences with products and help each other out. I am gonna go rinse, and I'll be right back. 
And we are back. Yeah, bit of a sad story on that. Let me know if any of you have theories as to why the pump would malfunction. I saw another reviewer have the same problem. That's why I、uh, suspect it may have been pulled from production. Really. Okay, let's move on. I have a lot of toning steps in today's video. I want to start with a new release. So Make Prim has come out with this Intica. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> Is there a wrong way to say it? I don't know. Intica Collection, which is supposed to be based around soothing your skin, and this is the Intica Soothing Pad. I requested this one from Stylevana. I really wanted to see what this collection is all about. It looked great to me. It is a fragrance-free, essential oil-free collection. We have those calming Sika constituents in here. We have a bit of niacinamide, and this one also has PHA in the form of. Gluconolactone. Now, something that's really interesting about PHA is that it's often called an alternative to AHA, but we actually see in the research that while it is an exfoliating ingredient, it is actually a hydrating ingredient as well, which I think might explain why me over here with my dry and sensitive skin, I find myself gravitating to PHA as well as LHA. Far more these days than I do to uh, uh, AHA and BHA. You get these little tweezers. They're supposed to stay in the lid. They never do for me. I just had to fish them out. But anyway, here we'll pull the pad out, and you can also do the sheet masking with this. I like how my conclusion in the cane, yes, it was cane, right? In the cane versus、uh, fresh kombucha essence trial, I said. This method is wonderful. That's that's where the magic is. And have I kept doing this method? No. <laughs> How is it possible that we know the things that lead to good skin for ourselves, and yet do we do them? Do we do them? I would tell you it's laziness, but I actually think a lot of it is that to this day, even though I have tons of skincare products, I still always feel a little bad going through them. It, Doesn't really make sense. Maybe it does. I grew up poor. You, if you grow up poor, I think you just—I think you will always have a different perspective on life than someone who didn't. And not always in a bad way. For the record, I am not unhappy that I grew up poor. I'm actually really glad about it because I think it—it it shaped me into who I am in a more,、uh, you know, understanding way. I just feel like if you grew up poor, you can rise above, but you will always be. I, th- I think you'll be more sympathetic to others. Enough of a history of my life there. Yeah, I really like these. I don't buy too many of these soothing pad type of products, just the the pad in one. But I see the appeal. If you don't want to, you know, take the time putting toner onto the separate cotton rounds, then it, it's a nice system. I just I wish those tweezers stayed in the lid better. Oh, see, of course, now they're staying. Of course. Let's move on to an essence toner. Always an interesting product. Is it an essence or a toner? It's a little bit of both. This is the Safe Me Relief Essence Toner. This is a product, so this is just the mini size. I got this in a sample set, and I've heard so many people rave about this. I know it comes in a gigantic bottle, which I think is. A really nice approach for products like this. I suspect, and I'm saying I suspect because I just don't really feel like I can really give you a long-term review with one fluid ounce of this toner. But I suspect it's one of those where it is soothing, it is hydrating, and it is a simple product. And I feel like sometimes that's exactly the perfect fit in a skincare routine. I was asking a subscriber about this one, and she said she likes to use multiple layers of this product, which that makes sense to me. I can see this being one of those where it's it's really you, you see the effect of it as you layer more and more of this product, because it is amazing how much hydration you can get from a product just by doubling or tripling up on it. We are about to move on to what may be my absolute favorite product from Make Prim. Can you guess what it is? Oh, I love this one so much. The extra moisture essence containing panthenol deep moisture. Comfort me, panthenol moisture essence. 
I have some condensation on mine because I like to keep it in my little skincare mini fridge. Oh, it is going to be so cooling to put this on my skin. I'm sorry. Have, have we talked before about how I actually genuinely really love skincare? I mean, I love the products that I love and this is, it's one of them. This has been a product I've been using for a long time and you know, it, it looks like it's a small bottle, but this is in fact 2.7 fluid ounces of product. It's really interesting to uh, hold that up against this 1.35 ounces. You just, you really can't tell that much from packaging. You always have to look at the amount of product. Anyway, it turns out that lasts a very long time, but maybe because it's such a, a milky essence, you, you don't need much of this. Oh but how wonderful it is. But you know what it is with this product? I feel like this is just so made for me. I mean, not like Make Prim was over here going, we're gonna make a product just for Alice. No, it's just coincidentally exactly what I love. I like panthenol. It is an amazing, soothing ingredient. And I find, I gotta say something real quickly. I find it so funny that I love panthenol and yet I'm pretty neutral towards niacinamide and yet, both are B vitamins. This is the exact same reason why I think we should distinguish vitamin C from vitamin C derivatives. They're all different ingredients. I think I will always like a creamy base over a gel because you know, it's a, it's a skin type thing. Of course I will, I have a drier skin type. And so it absorbs into my skin, but I can also feel this emollient layer that is left behind on the surface of my skin to, to soften up my dry skin. Ah, oh, no added fragrance, no essential oils. It is a wonderful product. And then we have the serum step in which I'm going to use an ampoule, which is pretty similar to a serum. This is, oh, I already showed you all this before. The Idabenone Lifting Ampoule. So Idabenone is a synthetic alternative to coenzyme Q10. You sometimes see it attributed with being a line smoothing ingredient. I will say a few things on this product. I do like the creaminess. We, we just talked about this. I like that it is a creamy serum or ampoule. Uh, however, I do feel, I feel a little more research is needed on idabenone. But if you are interested in idabenone, I mean, I do think you're gonna get some antioxidant activity from it. But I gotta be honest with you all, I do actually prefer the Marion May idabenone products. I would just rather tell you when I prefer a product from another brand. I, I mean, I just, it's just more helpful, I feel. They're typically priced a little better. This one does have essential oils. And uh, out of all the Ida B Known products, or at least the two from Mary and May I've tried, that moisturizer, that Ida B Known moisturizer is amazing. It's one of those moisturizers where it has such a nice cosmetic elegance to it and yet it's incredibly affordable. So yeah, if you're looking for, I would say in particular a daytime moisturizer because I like antioxidants plus sunscreen. It is a little heavier. Some people will probably prefer it at night, but I like it during the day for my dry skin. That's my pick. That's my pick over this personally. All right, my friends, it is time for the dramatic portion of this video for some skincare drama. Not really, <laughs> not, not, not really, just mistakes were made. Let me tell you the story. So again, this is not a, a review in which I just bought all these products. I've had them for a while. So these two moisturizers, one of them is called the Hydrate Me Micro Tension Cream and the other is called the Safe Me Relief Moisture Cream. Now, I no longer had the boxes for these, so I pulled them out and I knew, I knew that I could use one of these but not the other. So I looked at these and saw Safe Me, only 12 ingredients. That's the name of the product, only 12 ingredients, pH 5.5, but with moisturizing effect. It's called Safe Me. Smelled it. I don't smell anything. Let's smell the other one. Deep and full moisturizing, what you want, hydrate me, micro tension cream. Oh, oh, that's lavender. So I immediately went, this is the one I can't use. And safe me, labeled safe me, is clearly the one that I can. I will now put the ingredients of the safe me moisturizer up on the screen. Listen, this is not any kind of universally bad ingredients list. However, it certainly does contain 
two essential oil ingredients, count them two, bergamot as well as sage. And here's my deal, I am not opposed to essential oils, but there's a handful that I have noticed I have consistent problems with, and both of those are that list. They are that list, bergamot and sage. We talked about sage in the uh, uh, round lab trial. Bergamot's been a, a long running ingredient of concern. Look at how much of this I used. Look at <laughs> All I needed to do was look up what the 12 ingredients were, but I read safe me and I didn't smell anything. And we've already talked about how my nose is not good. <laughs> Maybe some people would have smelled it, but I didn't smell it, and I, I trusted, I trusted the name Safe Me. Don't do that, because the amazing thing is, even though Hydrate Me, this other moisturizer, does in fact contain essential oils, I actually, I don't mind lavender. Now again, let me say something here. This is why I fully understand people who say that you would prefer to just be completely fragrance and essential oil free. Because if you choose that, you are minimizing your risk. Make no mistake about that. I will still try products with essential oils, but I do want to be honest and upfront about this. It is a risk. Some people do have allergies, some people find they experience irritation from essential oils, and some people don't. But anyway, my PSA for this video is don't make this mistake, you know, don't look at the name of a product and the claims on the bottle and trust that. Read the ingredients list. Just, just take the time to read it. Especially if you're somebody who does deal with irritation, acne, issues like that. Read the ingredients list. <sighs> so mad at myself. That is just, it's so out of character for me, but I, I knew that there was one and not the other, so I guessed safe me and not hydrate me. Anyway, I actually do like hydrate me. I actually like it more. It's a little heavier than the safe me option and dry skin type. It does really smell like lavender though. Very, very hefty on the lavender. I mean, again, I don't mind essential oils, but I, I, I truly would prefer it to be essential oil free, or at least in the similar way to uh, uh, what Purito does. I wish that there, as well as Elf, I wish there was a fragrance free option. So anyway, I figured this out this week as I was making the ingredients list. So imagine how mad at myself I was over here. Can you imagine? You can. I have been breaking out for weeks and I could not figure out why. I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> so yes, PSA, read ingredients. I will tell you though, because I don't have these boxes, I hope I have these ingredients list correct. If you see anything wrong, feel free to let me know. That's why I try to keep the boxes for doing reviews so I can make sure I have the right ingredients list. But again, I, I guess I didn't think I was ever really gonna do a make prim trial. Have any of you made a mistake like that? Let me know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. We, we can help each other avoid products that are labeled for sensitive skin, but maybe they aren't. Anyway, we have one final product. This is the Peel Me Radiance Peeling Sleeping Pack. I was also gifted this one. Uh, so this is a, a, a sleeping mask. It does have PHA, but a different form. This one actually has lactobionic acid, which I feel like that does not get as much attention as gluconolactone. When it comes to lactobionic acid, we have some published studies showing that it helps with hydration at 10%. There's also, with both of these, research that shows there's not a significant difference between 10 and 30%. I find that really interesting. I think, you know, again, this is, this is talking about the um, level of efficacy of these active ingredients. I think that it's easy to assume you always want more, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you just add more and it doesn't do anything more for your skin. This is all to tell you, I think this is fine, but it didn't end up being a product where I really feel the need to repurchase it. For me, for sleeping masks, I prefer, you all know I prefer the Suasu. I also really like Cosrx's Honey Sleeping Mask, or Propolis rather, that's a really good one. That's it, I'm done with tonight's skincare routine, and I gotta say, I, I still feel like Make Prim is a sunscreen brand in my mind, wherein I have a couple of other skincare products that I like. This one. And I do like these Inteka soothing pads as well. 
And I think I do get the Safe Me toner essence as well, but I think for me, I think I just kind of prefer, you know, my, my fermented toners, my kombucha toners, just personally. That's all personal preference. I think all three of these are well done, and I like that they are essential oil and fragrance free. And my friends, that brings us to the end of my Make Prim reviews. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I certainly didn't try everything from this brand, so feel free to comment other products you may have tried. How did those go for you? How did these products go for you? In case you missed my community post, May is going to be a very different month on this channel. Rather than do a month-long review, I'm going to go back and do some of this re-reviewing, but quicker. I don't want to overthink things. I want to just see, you know, where are some of these brands I talked about five years ago, three years ago, where are they now? Feel free to drop in the comment section below any brands you want to see me revisit next month. And thank you all so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all next time.